everybody, welcome back. If you're a returning viewer, welcome if you are new. As always, my name is Addie and this is the Knits by AJ Knitting Podcast. And this is where I come every week to discuss my knitting projects and how much progress I've made over the week. Um, it is currently a Tuesday, so I'm all out of sorts because I usually film these on a Monday. But it shouldn't really make too much of a difference for you because it will still go up on a Thursday. Um, and it is also the Easter holidays and so it's a little bit later than I usually film so I think like people are doing construction down the road and my husband and my daughter are both at home today so apologies if there is a little bit more background noise than there usually is but such is life and hopefully you won't notice. Um, I also wanted to say a massive thank you to everybody for subscribing. I have just ticked over 500 subscribers which is just an insane amount of people to think are watching me waffle on about my knitting every week and it is so lovely to have you here so thank you all so very much for that um and yeah let's just get into it um i have i'm also coming off the back of just a little bit of a uh, head cold so apologies if i do sound a little bit nasally but it shouldn't matter hopefully you won't notice um so yeah I have got a new finished object this week, which is also what I am wearing, and it is my Daft Days cardigan, which I showed as a whip last week, and last week I had finished the body, I hadn't picked up for the button bands or the neck band, and I had no sleeves, and obviously that is all done, and I have sewn on my buttons, thank you all for your input about my buttons, I did choose to um, put on the flower shaped buttons, which just look like this, um, from Pigeon Wishes and yeah I'm really happy with them I think it really brings out the yellows um, with other pops of colour as well and yeah I'm really happy with them um I'll give you a bit more of a view I will also probably film some b-roll of me wearing this because this corner that I film in it's not the easiest to like stand up in so yeah here we are so it's a round necked cardigan and I have knit mine a little bit cropped so it just comes to like the top of my jeans just for spring so if I wear it with a dress it's not gonna like massively drown me uh, it's a drop shoulder construction um, and yeah it's this all over slip stitch stripe pattern and yeah if I haven't mentioned already this is a pattern by Rebecca Clo. I knit size one and I used full Kalana Panilla and I used mini skeins that are from The Lonely Knitter, who has recently had a bit of a rebrand. She now goes under um, Folk Yarn Studio, which um, I believe she's still going to be use having The Lonely Knitter as her hand-dyed things. But everything's going to be under the umbrella of Folk Yarn Studios. And that is because she's just come out with a, over when Laura was planning um, East Anglia Yarn Festival, um, she also released her new yarn base um which is called folk and it is like um i think it's farmed in east anglia spun in yorkshire and then sent back to east anglia um for laura to die so yes she is now going under the umbrella of folk yarn studio but she is still also the lonely knitter so yes all of my mini skein stripes are from her and five of them are from the november club that she did last year which was frozen themed and then the other 14 are from the ice and fire collection from last summer which I also knit a striped sweater out of um, the striped sweater was by Andrea Maori so yes these were all leftovers and I you so I got gauge I got stitch gauge um, so I've measured re-measured my gauge after I finished this um, and so I got stitch gauge of 21 stitches my row gauge is ever so slightly off so the pattern suggests you get 33 rows per 10 centimeters and I got 31 and I think that that is purely because of the weight of the garment um, pulling it down but that has not bothered me because I do have a longer torso and I did do a mid mid project block here and so I knew about that and adjusted accordingly um, but so all of my mini skeins are a super yeah, super wash 75 25 sock yarn, and then my main colour, the panilla, is a non super wash DK. Um, I think it's 100% Peruvian Highland wool. And so that I think has 
I think the non-superwash has meant that it hasn't grown massively, but the superwash has meant that it has grown ever so slightly and then the weight of it has pulled it down. So yeah, just something to think about if you do use a superwash um, and a non-superwash together, or if you're just using a superwash, that the weight of this and the st stitch pattern can mean that it's gonna grow a fair bit. I um, had to go up a couple of needle sizes for this, so I knit mine on a 3.75 and a 4.5 instead of a 3.25 and a 3.75 um, that were recommended in the pattern. Um, I ended up using just under three balls of the panilla, so just under 150 grams. And I used about three grams of each mini for each stripe on the sleeves, so six grams per sleeve, no, six grams for the sleeves, and then um, I think I used about seven grams for each of the body stripes. Um, so you could easily get, so that obviously I knit size, well actually, sorry, I knit size one for the body, but I knit size two for the sleeves, um, and that was because when I was picking up stitches, I think because of my sort of, um, slightly bigger row gauge it meant that every time I tried to pick up less stitches it kind of just bunched a bit and so I decided to just I kept on picking up stitches and trying to get down to the amount of stitches I needed for size one and it just kept looking funny so I just picked up the amount of stitches for size two and knit my sleeves to size two which ended up with the same amount of stitches at the end for the cuff as size one anyway so I don't it was just that I picked up more stitches at the underarm and then knit more decreases so it worked out actually to not be at all detrimental because I've got a little bit of extra room here and obviously I don't have any bunching at the underarm. So so yeah, just to say that I I managed to get all of my stripes and everything out of 20 mini skeins, 20, 20 gram mini skeins with leftovers because I obviously knit something else out of the ice and fire ones and I still have a little bit of them left over I'm all out of sorts today. I, like, I'm sorry if none of this is making sense. If you do have questions, please just ask me in the comments below. I do apologise. Um, what else? Yeah, so obviously using mini skeins with this meant that I ended up with an absolutely obscene amount of ends. So I did 20 stripes for... I can't get my whole arm in. So I did 20 stripes for my sleeve. So I started off with this... With um, this which is one of the frozen minis and then carried on and then that is also at the bottom of the cuff as well because I only had 19 different colours because um, I had 14 mini skeins from the Ice and Fire collection and then five from the Frozen Club, um, the November Club for, that was Frozen themed. So yeah, I just popped that one back in at the end of the cuff and actually I think it, it kind of correlates quite well because it's also the first one on the body because the body is bottom up and then the sleeves are top down. So yeah, it works out quite well, uh, but that did mean that I had an obscene amount of ends. I had 42 ends for each, so 42 ends on one sleeve and then another 42 for the other sleeve and then um, the same again for the body. And then the extras for having picked up for the button band. So um, this is my pile of ends after trimming them which is just ever so slightly ridiculous. So yeah, if you um, are not a fan of um, having to sew in and trim ends, then I would suggest knitting this in two colours and carrying your yarn up the side, because uh, took, it took me like a full day just to sew in the ends on this. Um, but either way, I'm really, really happy with this. Um, I have got just enough positive ease that I can happily wear this un like over the top of my all of my t-shirts and my long sleeve tees and everything. Um, but I could also like wear it almost as a blouse. I think that I might have accidentally sewn this button too far away from each other or enough because I do like, it's not that it's gaping, it's not that there isn't enough room there. It's just that I think the buttons are either too far away from each other or I need to move this button further over and this one further over to kind of stop it from doing that because it kind of wants to it kind of wants to make a gap, like a gap there. But, I mean, it doesn't bother me. I, I'm not, I don't think I have the confidence to wear it, like, 
without a vest underneath so today I do have a like a little camisole vest underneath it so there's always that but I don't know this is my first time that I've knit a round necked cardigan and actually I really like it I think it I'd sort of can I've always done a v-neck cardigan and I've always thought oh we're just I don't know if it would suit me, like a round neck cardigan, which is absolutely ridiculous because I wear obviously round neck sweaters all the time. But yeah, I th I really like it and I think that I would like to have more in my wardrobe. My sleeves are really, really long, <laughs> which I really like. Um, and I've just added tubular bind offs on the bottom of those to match the tubular cast on that I did at the bottom of the ribbing, which is not in the pattern, it's just what I chose to do. And I also added in tubular bind offs on the um, button bands and also at the top on the neck band as well. So yeah, that is that. And I cast this on on March the 14th and I cast it off um, on March the 31st. So this was on my needle for 17 days in total. Um, I will also do my usual rundown of the cost of this pattern now that it is finished. So the I've got fluff on my lip. Um, the cost of this project, uh, so I will do two rundowns actually, because I think that'll be easiest. Um, and so the cost of the pattern was seven pounds. The cost of the yarn is where things are going to differ. So for this first rundown, so the cost of the pattern was seven pounds. The cost of the yarn for the, mi the frozen minis, of which there were five, was 20 pounds. The cost of the ice and fire minis, if I had bought them on their own just for this project, would have been £54. And then the cost of the, for three balls of the panilla was £12.50. And the cost of the buttons was £9, which brings my total cost with the full price of those ice and fire minis to £102.50. However, because I have already used these Ice and Fire Minis for one project, the cost for me, I'm going to say I'm going to half those Ice and Fire Minis. So with the £7 for the pattern, £20 for the Frozen Minis, £27, so half cost of the Ice and Fire Minis, £12.50 for the Panilla and the £9 for the buttons, that brings my total cost of this pattern to £75.50, which actually I'm quite happy with. Um, Obviously it would have been cheaper if I had used two colours or less colours I suppose but I am more than happy with this and it also it got all of those like tiny bits of mini skein out like half mini skeins out of my um out of my stash so yes very very happy with this very very happy with this um and would happily knit it again so that is my Daft Days cardigan and I, you can expect to see quite a lot of this now that it's spring. Um, I desperately wanted this in my wardrobe and I'm so very, very happy to have it. So that's my finished object for today as well and also covers what I'm wearing. So next up we are going back into my whips and first off before I actually get into any of the whips that I've worked on, I just want to put in an honorary mention for my daughter's festival dress. Um, which still looks like this. I did move my marker, but I did not work on it at all this week. So it still looks like this. And I did have intentions of picking it up and working on this week, but I really just wanted to get this cardigan off my needles and just get it going because I wanted it in my wardrobe and I just, yeah, it just fell by the wayside. And so hopefully I will pick that back up this week, but I'm also not promising anything because we are now into the Easter holidays and I will have my daughter at home with me all week so my knitting time is reduced somewhat. So yes, didn't pick that up this week so a bit of an honorary mention to say that it is still there but that's it for this week on that one. My second whip is my vanilla socks which I cast on last week which have got some work because we have been going on a couple of days out and I usually knit these whilst I'm being passenger princess in the car and just if I'm just sitting on the sofa or something and because I've been a bit poorly this week we had like typically at the end of the school term we were fine through most of the school term and then like in the last week my daughter came home with a cold and it's been just the most awful head cold like all up in the sinuses and so my ability to concentrate on 
patterns and things was dramatically reduced. I just couldn't do it. My like my brain was just so full of sinus headache that I just needed something simple and sort of comforting to kind of keep my this is such a mess <laughs> just to kind of like keep my hands busy but not really have to think about too much so this was perfect and also so have these so were these vanilla socks so when I spoke about these last week I was here at the yeah yeah there here I just finished the cuff and so there are 11 rounds for the cuff Oh, and I should probably say that I am knitting these up out of the Lonely Knitter 7525 sock in her, it was the Princess Diaries colourway, it's called You Saw Me When I Was Invisible, and it was the sock set. So you got a 20 gram mini, which was this green, and then a 100 gram um, main skein. Um, so yes, that's what I am using here. And... So yeah, I did 11 rounds for the cuff and that's where I was last week. And then since then I have knit 40 rounds for the leg of the sock and I have done the heel flap and the heel turn on one sock. So I'm knitting these two at a time, magic loop, and I have absolutely no idea what has happened here, but it's just utter chaos. So yeah, these are what they are looking like. I need to do the heel flap and the turn on this one next um now that i finished this one so the way that i do my two at a time socks is that i work them from the inside and the outside of the ball if i get the ball out so yeah i work from the inside and the outside of the ball um whilst i'm just doing stockinette in the round and then for the heels and the heel turns i do them one at a time because i'm working them flat and then so i will then pick up the stitches around the edge of one sock and then i will go back to the second sock and I'll do the heel flap and turn and pick up the stitches on that one and then I'll work the gusset and everything in the round again and continue doing that until I then have to kitchen them together for the toe. So I'm do using the mini for the cuff, heel flap and the toe but I am currently, so this is all I have left of the mini and I'm unsure at this point if I'm going to have enough to do the heels and the toes out of this. I think I should have enough but if I don't then they may have a slightly different coloured end of the toe which isn't the end of the world I'm not really all that fussed when it comes to vanilla socks because like most of the time they're either in my slippers or my shoes and so no one's really going to see them and to be perfectly honest I don't think anyone's going to berate me for a slightly different coloured end of toe on my sock it's a <laughs> it's a uh, it's a style choice it's not a it's not a mistake it's a style choice so there we go um so yeah I'm just pulling along on these um, I put in my markers as I usually do to kind of show how many rounds I've done on the sock. So I put these in every 10 rounds so it's just easy to count and then when I do the, well usually when I then do the second sock I then move them over but because I'm doing these two at a time it was more just to say how many rows rounds I have done without having to go back and count them all the time. Um, and I only do them on the, when I'm doing them two at a time, I only do them on the first sock and I obviously only put the marker on the second, on the first sock as well so that I know which one is the first sock so I'm not constantly going which one, which one, which one. So yes, that is what I'm doing with those and then I will just be continuing on after I've done the heel to do the gusset and the foot and hopefully have these cast off fairly soon so that I can get started on my sock of the month for April to do my year of socks. So that is those. And I'm using two millimeter needles if I haven't said that already. I always do for my vanilla socks. I am a notoriously loose sock knitter. And so um, I'm using two millimeter needles for those. And, oh yes, and I started with 56 stitches at the cuff and then I increased to 60 stitches for the leg and then I'm carrying on on 60 stitches for the rest of the sock um, and I cast these on on the 24th of March and so they've currently been on my needles for nine days so actually yeah not too bad and yeah they're not a full length sock they're kind of like a, a short they're not a shorty but they're like a short calf mid calf sock and so yeah they're, they're slightly longer than a shorty there we go we'll go with that and so that is those
and my last whip of today is my older sweater and again there's not been as much progress on this as I necessarily would want to I, I think I just set myself really lofty goals when it comes to this and then forget how long it actually takes me to to knit it because it does require a lot more concentration than as I said I've not been um, feeling 100% this week and so my ability to concentrate has just not been as high as usual so last time and also utter chaos so last time I showed this I had finished sleeve one and I was I had done one one decrease yeah one decrease on sleeve two and now I have done um I think I've got two decreases left on sleeve two so it currently looks like this and then I if I hold these up together you'll be able to see how much more I've got to do to make them match let me line up the underarms so yeah this is where we are so I've got all of this bit back here to do to get the sleeves to match and then I will be going back to the body so this is a pattern again by Rebecca Clo or the Crayer Bayer and I'm knitting size 2 and I'm using BC Garn Lot Le Monde in the colours Pine Tree and Sand and I'm using 3mm and 3.5mm needles so yeah I've got two decreases left to do on the second sleeve and yeah there's just not been as much progress so I did one two three four I did four pattern repeats um over the sleeve so that's um what was that 48 52 rounds um give or take which yeah it's not I mean this took up quite a lot of my time to get it to get both sleeves done and the all of the edgings and so on and all the ends and everything so within a week actually it's quite a lot of knitting and I think the, I think the thing that I find with this is that this is a very involved knit because it is all over pattern and there are decreases in the sleeves and everything once I get back to the body it might be a little bit quicker but then also there's a lot more stitches and so it's a DK weight pattern and it is going to take me it's going to take me just a little bit longer than say like something that's DK weight the same gauge but in just stocking out where I can just I don't have to look at it and I, it, I kind of almost get surprised by how much I've done because I'm not constantly looking at it and watching it grow every minute stitch at a time and I think also because I do obviously come in here every week and talk about my knitting and show it and everything I just sometimes feel like I get this pressure put on myself by myself not by anybody else by myself to do loads of progress every week and like really churn out projects and be showing like something finished like doing a finished object every week and actually that's that's not why I knit these things and it's not it's not something that I want to promote because knitting is a slow craft it's something that we do it's meditative and it's calming and it's 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 supposed to be so that we get an end product that is sort of it fits exactly how we want it to and it yeah it fulfills the purpose exactly if I wanted something that I could just pick up off the rack at the shop and wanted it quickly then I would just go and buy it at the shop and I wouldn't put in all this time and effort and I think I just need to stop beating myself up about not having finished an entire sleeve in a week when I have also finished another object and like been caring for my daughter and doing other things around the house and like going on days out and doing like doing a million one other things um and working on other projects as well and it's sort of like I need to just stop beating myself up about not having worked on this as much as I want to because in reality I only have a couple of hours in the evening where I can actually sit down and knit this and not every evening do I want to sit down and knit this. Sometimes I my head is just not in it enough and I just need to sit down and do like 
bog standard stocking out on my vanilla socks or like do something that's a little bit more mindless that I've already done before in a shawl or just something like that that's not quite as involved as this and yeah long story short I just need to stop putting so much pressure on myself to finish a more complicated pattern in such a short period of time like I don't think that that's something that we should be promoting and I think I should be a little bit nicer to myself about the approach about the progress that I do make in a week compared to like how quickly I can finish something and so yeah I'm still really proud with how of how much I managed to get done on this despite everything else that was going on this week not feeling very well and obviously my daughter had a birthday this week and like we had family round there was bank holiday weekend it was the end of the school year like not in the school year sorry end of the school term and so yeah I'm actually really proud of how much I got done on this and I need to stop beating myself up about the fact that I've not finished the entire sleeve. So yes, that is how far I've managed to get this week. So this was my marker from last week and this is where I am now and I will be moving my marker again and I would like to finish this sleeve to the point where this one is um, this week but I'm not going to put too much pressure on myself because it is not a standard week and our routine has kind of gone a bit out the window because of... Um, lost a marker oh no I haven't it's just slipped over um yeah I'm not going to put too much pressure on myself because obviously we're out of routine and yeah it's the holidays and I want to spend time with my family so yeah I cast this on on February the 16th and it has been on my needles for 46 days currently um and yes I'm very happy with how it's going I just need to stop stressing myself out about it and killing all the joy that I have in it so yes that is, oh dear, throwing that on the floor. So that is actually everything that I have for this week. I have no acquisitions. Um, and yeah, I will be, well, I have a test net that I was accepted for, for Rebecca, uh, Rebecca Clo of the Cray of Bayer. I will be test knitting her Santa cardigan. So I am waiting on yarn for that to arrive. Um, we are in Advent reveal season. Um, so I've been eyeing up some advents, so I'm kind of trying to lessen my um, yarn purchases so that I can um, order pre-order some advents to arrive at the end of the year. So um, currently I am, I think I'm going to, well I'm currently eyeing up the yarn badger, she's doing um, is it a yarny adventure, um, Skin in the Stitch is doing um, Alice in Wonderland so those are two that I'm eyeing up at the moment and um, Helen of Giddy Yarns has just announced that she is going to be doing her so her weekly advent where you get I think it's it's either a sock set or a, a sock skein every week is going to be Grinch themed so I'm interested for that one as well but yeah I'm just kind of looking around at the moment and sort of trying to decide which one I may want to get this year. If you have any other, if you have any advents that you're eyeing up, um, please do let me know. But yes, thank you very much for watching and hanging out with me today. Um, it's been so lovely chatting to you all about my project. Um, and so if you have liked this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Um, please do subscribe if you haven't already and you want to hang out with me and check out my projects later on down the line as well um and yes <laughs> i feel really out of sorts and like really out of practice even though it's only been a week but yes thank you so very much for watching and i will catch you up again next week with some more knitting happy making <laughs>